So hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. I see there are still people uh, joining this call. So, uh, but I think we can already start. So hello, um, uh, they call me JK, uh, otherwise I'm Joseph, and I'm one of the founders and currently the CTO of Kiwi.com together with our CPO leading the development of the product. And today we would like to introduce you to uh, what Kiwi does uh, how how does it impact uh, the planet and uh, the ways people travel and uh, introduce you to the basic principles and things uh, how we operate uh, within our amazing uh, group <laughs> so uh, just to begin maybe so uh, what is the thing uh, Kiwi is building or in Czech Republic uh, you you would probably ask not so to <laughs> so uh what kiwi is doing since the beginning is basically uh trying to change uh the travel industry and have impact on the ways people travel and we as founders basically from the beginning we are we were building the product for ourselves and later we figured out uh, also other people have the same problem as we do meaning finding the best way to get somewhere for the best price and uh, with the best uh, connection or just other conditions that are important for the travelers. Uh, and we do this through technology. So we are building a technological product with a nice mobile app and a user facing front end and with some heavy uh, backend stuff on the background. And uh, the journey started uh, or the whole journey started in 2011 now this is a very nice timeline uh, but the journey started 2011 our initial business model was very very different from how we operate nowadays so through going through the years uh, basically the company changed a lot what we do changed a lot but we always uh, had the principle in mind that we want to provide the best service and the best product uh, for our customers. And even if the details on the background changed, uh, like the business model or just the way uh, we operate, uh, maybe with COVID we switched to full remote mode, these things changed. But uh, the one thing we all, always kept in mind was to what's the best thing we can do for our customers and what's the best next best thing uh, we can build into our product so our service is better and just the whole experience of using kiwi.com is more and more amazing. <laughs> now, we started in two, 2011 as two guys, uh, we met in a pub, we built some basic, very, very basic search product, uh, there was no interface, uh, but it basically did the routing, did the job. <laughs> And uh, this is what we presented to our angel investor at that time, Iji Hlavenka, who decided uh, it might be a good idea. So he took the risk and invested uh, some money into uh, two guys uh, with the idea. And for the first two years, we were a bit struggling, I would say, looking for the right thing to do, but talking to our customers and just trying, learning about the travel industry, which is quite complex, uh, more complex than we expected, uh, we found out the best way how to build a sustainable product that can make money and uh, uh, reinvest uh, this money to build an even better product. And it became a, basically a cycle. <laughs> uh, and there are many checkpoints during the, during the years. One of the biggest ones probably uh, was that uh, we were the first ones who actually started in the industry, who had all the data available on this planet or most of the data. And we were able to combine uh, low-cost carriers, which were the new kids in the game uh, since the 90s, with legacy carriers who were here from like forever. Uh, but we were the first one who had all the data available and who started to combine this data together, which basically in 2015, 16, 
was something that brought a very new product to the industry and opened many new uh, connections to travelers and just gave them even more options. This was 2016 and 17. It took a bit uh, to finish <laughs> the whole integration. And also formerly we were known as Skypicker, but in 2016, uh, we decided that uh, people were asking us all the time, Sky, Sky what, could, could you please spell it? And uh, we decided for the upcoming growth, it was not uh, the best brand. So we were looking for a new name and Kiwi.com uh, was one of the uh, probably best ideas that came up. And you know, banana sounded too stupid and uh, Apple was taken. So we decided to go for Kiwi and this is how we ended up with Kiwi.com. And here we are uh, on the slide 2020 is missing, but uh, it was a very specific year. So the whole travel industry it sort of disappeared in front of our eyes. So in 2019, we had a new investor on board and not even after the fir first year uh, with the uh, new investor, uh, we saw our growth just to stop and uh, we were really not confident about uh, what's next. Nobody knew how long COVID is going to take. But fast forward one year, here we are 2021 and we see that uh, we managed or the humanity basically or mankind managed uh, to fight COVID in a very efficient way. Uh, many people are getting vaccinated and uh, in Europe and US people uh, are waiting to start traveling again, probably for other reasons than before, because before people were traveling to see, see, see new places, see new experiences. Now what we see, people want to travel to meet their friends, uh, meet their family, uh, which they missed probably a lot after a year of being in isolation. So here we are now, COVID, uh, COVID is slowly disappearing and uh, we are looking forward to the summer, which might be amazing and uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, going forward to the traveling in summer, uh, Kiwi ended up uh, during the years building teams across the world. So the way uh, we were structuring on com our company was that we were headquartered in Brno, but as a travel company, we always believed that uh, we should just travel and uh, go around the world and diversity being one of the principles led us to open basically Kiwi, we call it Kiwi.com hubs around Europe and also in Asia and uh, US. And now as this event is very specific for product and engineering, uh, all of the sites in Europe are basically engineering sites. So we have engineering teams in uh, uh, most of them and uh, yeah, so the company became fully remote during COVID and after COVID, we will be moving to a mode where we will operate in Kiwi.com uh, hubs, meaning you can work remotely, but we value uh, when people meet each other and we want our people or our colleagues to see each other and uh, just, you know, have a beer together sometimes because uh, everybody missed that for the past year. <laughs> These are some numbers, as you can see, uh, there is more than 1000 employees, main nationalities, and it's quite a diverse environment, which is a good and a bad thing at the same time. So such a diverse environment creates uh, basically lots of conflicts, but we see conflict something as good. And if you're able to work with the conflict and get to a conflict resolution, uh, this is a great environment because it just yields so many ideas and there are so many points of view and different problems that uh, we believe this is the best way uh, to build an amazing product where you have many inputs and you just get the best out of this. 
yeah let's i will talk a little bit about the engineering the slide calls it magic <laughs> but essentially uh, what the Kiricom architecture and what all the systems uh, in our company do is that uh, we crunch all the possible data in the industry. So uh, it's a massive data, uh, data ingestion machine that then stores all the available data somewhere in a database or multiple databases actually. And then... Uh, improves this data or tries to find ways how to find value in them and then on, at the end of the uh, funnel we provide this data through multiple interfaces or apis or some other ways to our partners who then uh, distribute it to the customers or kiwi or also distributes the data directly to the customers and this is just the magic that is happening so data comes in kiwi does its magic and then Kiwi shows the magic to the customers and the customers are happy because they found something that uh, very often was not available anywhere else. No one else on this planet actually has the ability or has actually all the contracts and all the business processes in place to be able to do something uh, similar to this. Not, uh, not yet. So this is what actually makes or puts Kiwi in a quite unique position uh the whole flow and the thing uh in the middle built by our engineering and product teams now a little bit about their engineering culture so the slide says python go c plus plus docker whatever but what we believe in is to it's just using the right tool uh for the job all the time turns out very often python is the right tool because it's just does many things very easily and then if you need performance or engineers usually turn to go or c plus plus because of course python has its limitations now we try to run our systems in a very resilient mode because availability is something that is important for customers if you're flying somewhere and your mobile app would stop working it's not something we'd like to see happening so all of our systems are running on cloud. Uh, we are a huge customer of Google and we are running things on GCP. And there is Docker, Kubernetes, all those things that uh, do all the shuffle shuffle in the background. And uh, yeah, sometimes can get confusing. <laughs> uh, in general, we try to follow the engineering best practices and just have everything automated and have the all the possible tools in place uh, because we and I myself we just hate repetitive work so many things are automated we don't want to spend our code reviews uh, poking on uh, syntax or anything else this is something that a linter can do and uh, there are also tools for that just help you to build a better code and yeah, JavaScript is on the front end. That's typical. To, nowadays, it's typical to use React, and Kotlin and Swift uh, are used for the uh, mobile apps. Now we've been to React Native. We found out it's not the best experience for customers, so we rolled back to uh, using basically uh, native uh, mobile things. Now. What is this good for for you? <laughs> uh, Kiwi is a company where you not only uh, build a great product used by hundreds of thousands or millions of people. On the background of this product, there is some pretty solid technology that's crunching lots of data and it's uh, built in a very specific way that it does one thing, but it does it really, really well. So uh, being able to be close to such a technology is something really great from my point of view. And uh, Kiwi is very specific about moving fast and just developing and iterating uh, very fast on our product. So what we do is that, uh, okay, we have this great idea. So what's next? Uh, we go and ask our customers 
hey, do you like this idea? Would you use this product? And we're like, yeah. So we, as fast as possible, we try to get feedback from customers without coding anything still at this stage. Then we try to code the MVP as fast as possible. This can take less than week two, maybe three. Just show it to our customers, see their reaction, uh, gather data, and just iterate on this until we get to a product that is solid enough to roll out to all the hundreds of thousands of the customers. We always start small in small chunks, and then we, with each iteration, uh, we add up features and users. So we believe this is the best way to get from idea to production instead of spending months on coding something. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is, I believe, a great skill to learn uh, for anybody's career who is considering working in the future for in engineering or product for product focused companies. Uh, the point is to move fast, iterate quickly, learn what your customers need, and then just try to provide it to them. And uh, I couldn't imagine how the travel industry complex is. It's a huge beast. It's very specific. I probably we haven't seen anything like this before. So learning about the travel business and its specifics is something just something super interesting and uh, I enjoy it. And there is every day something new that uh, we learn. Sometimes it surprises us. Sometimes it's like that's expect, expected, but uh, I can say every day <laughs> there is something new that comes up and it uh, keeps amazing us. So, yeah, some general data. As I said, our systems uh, are used by millions of uh, customers. There is basically anything that gets off ground nowadays, probably using Kiwi databases in some way. Uh, talking about flights, maybe rockets in the near future. And before COVID, we used to sell 40,000 seats per day. Now with COVID uh, hitting the industry, this went to maybe 40, 50% uh, nowadays. And also the average searches, of, average number of searches per day in peaks before COVID, we were hitting 100 million searches, meaning 100 million people around the world were asking through multiple channels uh, what, what is the best way to get some somewhere and from those one in millions a few millions ended up uh, directly on kiwi.com because there are many other ways uh, and many other providers and we have just a chunk of the market and ultimately where we are heading uh, with our product vision, meaning uh, Kiwi having all the data and all the capabilities, uh, we want to become basically a layer on top of the travel industry, uh, which is routing our customers uh, in the best way and providing and covering basically all their needs. Now, ultimately, if you have such a layer in place, it opens some magical capabilities and uh, have and these capabilities can be called a virtual global supercarrier uh, with a fancy name uh, but ultimately it enables things like you should be able to tell customers hey so pay us a monthly fee and travel as much as you want we will give you the boundaries uh, but you can travel however how much you want so ultimately this is where we are heading and uh, this is the technology that should get us there but this is a maybe a multi-decade plan so first step is to build a solid virtual global super career layer which then enables uh, many many other opportunities the if you want to get a better understanding how all these things I called magic and the product development and the whole process uh, works in the background, uh, there is the agenda for today. And uh, there are things from the process and people side. So how we, how we basically manage our work 
and our daily lives uh, through to until the tech side where there is uh, 10 speakers, each of them presenting uh, his area. And uh, if you put all of them together, <laughs> it gives you the overall picture uh, of Kiwi.com. So, yeah, thank you. And uh, Volodymyr, what would be the best way to move to the questions right now? So we have first question for you, Joja. Thanks for the talk. What is your personal view on remote working? Is this sustainable even after the pandemic is over? Ha, good question. <laughs> so uh, there is a thing that before COVID, everyone was, oh, remote is amazing. Everybody wanted to be remote because everybody imagined you go to Mexico and you work from the beach. Now with COVID, we learned that working remotely is possible, especially for like software engineers. It's a good thing. But after a year of being isolated, uh, I really miss people <laughs> and uh, all our colleagues and uh, just the personal interactions. You know, Zoom is nice, but it could be probably much better. And uh, going forward, uh, personal interaction will be something Kiwi will be pushing. And even if we stay in a remote or hybrid mode where we work in uh, kiwi.com hubs uh meaning you can spend probably four days a week working remotely but at least once per week or once per month it would be good to go to the office uh, see your colleagues and just probably discuss some things in person it's much better than through zoom so it's sustainable with slight adjustments where we remove covid and we add uh, more personal interaction after we are all vaccinated hopefully soon Thank you. Uh, we have another question here. From a very personal perspective, what was your biggest challenge since you started Kivicom in 2018? <laughs> 11, sorry. Not 18, but 11. Yeah. 2011, yeah. Uh, uh, every day was a challenge. The <laughs> biggest challenge was uh, basically building the great team we have nowadays. And uh, uh, there is a trick I was using. So <laughs> how, how do you hire people th that are better than you? Please, let's keep this in this uh, audience then. I'll, I was during the interviews, I was asking questions where I didn't know the answer. So you could tell me like anything. And I was only looking for to learn something from you. So if I was interviewing a person who teached me something, I was like, OK, we, we need this guy to join us. And this is how we actually built a very solid uh, core team who then continued doing something very similar, just hire people who are better than you. And uh, yeah, but this was very challenging and probably one of the hardest and and things that took uh, us the longest time. So, and it's still going on. So this. <laughs> okay. Uh, another question. Is there something you would recommend to people who want to start working in IT? Uh, <laughs> <like> don't <laughs> no no, no. Uh, yeah uh, just figure out if it's the right thing uh, so if you want to work for IT you probably have to be really passionate about solving problems you have to you know enjoy all these krijo uh, kirebusi all all these things that just keeps your brain busy and if you're this type of person probably IT is the right thing for you and uh things will get automatic after some time just be passionate about it if you really feel you enjoy it do it if you don't enjoy it just don't find something else uh, i i didn't know anything about coding gun until i was 19 or something i just learned it because i needed to uh, automate something i was doing manually and i was i'm lazy there has to be a better way and this is actually how I got to uh, uh, Python and just building something with data. So uh, find your passion. If IT or computers uh, and problem solving is it, then yeah, do it. Otherwise, probably keep looking. <laughs> there are so many options on this planet. OK, and we have last one. Uh, what keeps you motivated as CEO of the same company for so many years? 
Yeah, that's a good question. There's a simple answer. So every day <laughs> it's a new challenge. And I mentioned it during the presentation. There are just uh, new things keep popping up, showing up. Uh, and until, you know, you learn something new every day, I think that's a very, very good motivation. And looking back uh, to the past year, uh, not only me, but we as a company, we learned so much about not technology, but uh, about our team and about uh, people and uh, how to how to be maybe more nice to each other. So until I keep learning, I think this uh, this is a very good driver, uh, not only for me, but for many other people as well. Okay, so there appeared last question we have time slot for. So thanks for the for great into talk. Do you already see the situation going back to normally in terms of the volume of traveling? Um, let's go maybe by one by one because there are a lot of them. So what would you say for that one? Yeah, so going back to normality, well, what's normal, you know? So uh, we see that people want to travel, their reasons and their habits are changing. So it's not because you want to see new things, but you actually want to see your friends and family because you were isolated, which is a great reason to travel. Uh, I finally am meeting people who I haven't seen for more than a year, uh, and this is great. So uh, probably there will be a new normal, and uh, it seems like summer is going to be close to uh, the volumes we saw before from the business point of view. And in terms of restriction tests, quarantines, if you're thinking about making a specific product and solution for this, yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, actually we are looking into uh, COVID testing and the ways how to provide it to travelers uh, in the part of parts of the world. So yeah, safe trip is something very important for us. And this is something uh which is just uh, part of the product uh, long term so yeah okay thank you thank you for your questions and uh, user for your presentation uh we'll uh we will move on 